When it comes to hydrogen fuel cells, the first thing that comes to many people's minds is the automotive sector. Whether that be the Hyundai Nexo, the Toyota Mirai, or the Honda Clarity, hydrogen got its fame from fuel cell technology. And there's obviously serious merit to that. Fuel cells provide a massive value proposition to the automotive sector with faster refueling times, lower weight, and the ability to recharge and refuel anywhere where there's a hydrogen source. But the infrastructure problem has bottlenecked their adoption significantly, and investments in hydrogen EVs has slowed down significantly since the start of the pandemic. A lot of startups ran into this space trying to develop hydrogen vehicles, but as we've clearly seen, only a select few of them have made it to the other side. Battery electric for consumer vehicles has clearly won out on top. This has resulted in high cash burn and very low return on investment from capital firms, venture capitalists who have picked the hydrogen sector for automotive applications. As a matter of fact, only a select few automakers and truck manufacturers like Nikola Motors and Hyzon are publicly traded and still on the markets today for their commercialization plans. So what if I told you that the automotive sector is not the real market for hydrogen today? Instead, it has to do with a very boring application in many cases for stationary power. This is in fact one of the most underrated applications for hydrogen fuel cells. And the market is growing actually much faster than the EV space. And right now there is one established company using NASA technology that has been in this industry for more than 20 plus years that is about to turn a profit. In this video, I want to analyze exactly what this company is, what could be the investment opportunity behind it, and what sets its technology apart from the competition. And surprise, surprise, right now there is very little competition for this company. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. The company in question is Bloom Energy Incorporated, based out of California, that is developing stationary hydrogen fuel cell applications for some of the biggest and baddest customers in North America. What this company does is sell these stationary fuel cell power modules that can allow businesses to make their own electricity to power their operations instead of relying on the electric grid. And the way that this technology works is by converting natural gas, which is available at basically every single commercial facility in North America, into electricity without any combustion. And for those of you that can't tell, this is a very big deal because the conventional way of producing electric power has always been through coal and oil combustion, digging fossil fuels out of the ground and then burning them and releasing a lot of CO2 emissions. Believe it or not, 90% of the world still uses coal and oil to produce electricity, despite the rapid growth that we have seen in renewable energy. This is a big problem, and no matter how many EVs we put on the road, this problem is what's really going to help reduce carbon emissions and help save the planet against climate change. And what Bloom Energy's value proposition here is, is the decentralization of the energy production through a net zero process. That same natural gas that is used to heat your house or produce food on the stovetop can now be used to generate electricity for your entire house or facility with zero combustion. This is not a diesel or natural gas generator that's making a lot of noise, polluting the environment and creating a lot of vibration. This is a stationary net zero and super quiet server package that can basically take the electric grid from a plant hundreds of miles away and put it in your backyard. This means that as long as you have a source of natural gas at your facility, which has a duty cycle in North America of north of 96% because it is all underground, you have electricity available. This is going to be a revolutionary technology for data centers and hospitals that can rely on the electric grid in case there's a massive outage, because obviously most power lines are above ground and subject to strict environmental factors. 
And this value proposition is turning into reality as Bloom pulls in almost $1.5 billion in annual revenue selling its fuel cell power modules. That is simply just from hardware sales. No software, no service. And that is very big numbers. Because if you look at any other of the fuel cell manufacturers in the US and in Europe, like Ballard Power, Plug Power, or even let's say Nikola Motors, they do not have anywhere near the amount of revenue that this company is pulling in. And this revenue is coming in from some of the top Fortune 500 companies from the names of Walmart, Home Depot, and Amazon that have signed long-term contracts to lease and purchase the server modules from Bloom Energy. And guess what? They've been doing this for more than five years now. So if there's very little value that these servers provided to these businesses, they would have ended those contracts a lot sooner, which means Bloom has a first mover advantage and a massive competitive moat over some of the other players in the space. And this right here is why this business is so attractive from an investment standpoint. In the first quarter earnings report that Bloom recently released, they had 37% revenue growth with record first quarter revenue, despite all the headwinds the hydrogen and technology industry is facing today. And what's even better is their gross and operating margins actually improved on a year over year basis from 15% in first quarter of last year to 21%, meaning this company has true pricing power and is reducing the cost of goods sold of their product. Whether it be fuel cell trucks, aircraft, trains, or buses, not many hydrogen fuel cell companies are profitable on the gross margin basis, even if they are growing significantly year over year. As a matter of fact, Bloom expects that for fiscal year 2023, they'll achieve a positive operating margin and potential positive cash flow from operating activities. Meaning if we subtract their cost of goods sold and their operating expenses and any financial or investment related cash expenses, they might have growth in their cash position instead of decline. And with an estimated $1.47 billion revenue stream in 2023 and the current market cap of the company, which is $3.1 billion, this stock would be worth around 2.47 on a price to sales basis. And as you can see in the bear market, this valuation has only but come down. Meanwhile, on the revenue side, they continue to hit all time highs. Now, don't get me wrong. There is always risks in capital intensive and loss making businesses like Bloom Energy. But in the innovative hydrogen sector, which we all know is about to grow very fast up until 2030, especially for green hydrogen, Bloom Energy is well positioned to capitalize on the stationary power market. And as we all know, investment sentiment from hedge funds and Wall Street always shifts to the upside when a company starts to all of a sudden increase profit margins. Right now we're in a phase where revenue growth for the market does not matter because of the inflationary and recessionary pressures we're seeing from interest rates. People are much more concerned about bottom line profitability. And this has been one of the reasons that Bloom itself has underperformed the market since 2021. But now with the right capital and partnerships that this company has from innovative suppliers in something like South Korea, this company is positioning itself very well to lead that profitability charge. And this in itself will also help the entire hydrogen sector gain some confidence from investors about the idea that this area can indeed be profitable in the long term. And truly the key metric to pay attention to here is not only going to be the gross and operating margins, but more importantly, the free cash flow margin, which definitely does vary with the financing and investment rounds that a company might do on a quarter to quarter basis. And with the current EPS estimates that Bloom Energy has released for 2023, the forward PE of this business is only around 40 with 37% revenue growth year over year. Whether or not this results in good shareholder value being created, I have no clue. All I'm going to do is share my research and my investment analysis behind some of the favorite companies that I see in the market. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below on whether or not Bloom's technology really is going to make a difference and whether or not this company can succeed in its bold ambitions. 
As usual, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.